folks, it's Sarah with Obadiahs, and today I am here to do the first burn video on the Drolet. This is the Bistro wood cook stove. Um, so this is kind of their main wood cook stove as far as stacked models goes. I have a lot of requests on this particular model on how it burns and how it operates. So today is going to be my first time lighting it up for you guys. I'm going to take you through the process, show you how to get your fire lit, um, how the unit burns. I'll give you guys some temperature readings throughout this video as well. I do want to point out if you watch my first burn videos, you're familiar with this process to any new viewers. Whenever you are lighting your wood stove for the very first time, it's really important that you break the stove in slowly. So what does that mean exactly? You are going to start with a very small kindling fire. You're going to let that burn down. From the kindling fire, once that's burnt down to, you know, kind of like a small little bed of coals, then you can go ahead and put one small log on there as well as some more kindling to kind of get it reignited. Um, once that burns down and then you have more of a bed of a coals rather than just, you know, like a little bit of kindling ash, um, at that point, then you're gonna come in and add in two logs to the fire. That's called our medium burn. You let your medium burn all the way down and then we move into our hot burn, which is basically going to be a full load of firebox with the damper controls wide open. So this process is an all day process. Um, I haven't really pointed that out. I get questions about that on the phone, so I wanna clarify. Your kindling fire burn is like 30 minutes. Um, your medium fire burn is probably about two to three hours, and then your hottest burn is going to be about four hours. So this process is an all day process, or sometimes for me, all night long. So anyway, I am going to take you guys to this process, and I hope you enjoy watching. So I have my kindling here. You can see it's cut nice and small. It's very dry. I'm going to go ahead and get it stacked up, get my fire lit. So I always stack my wood like a teepee style, which makes it very easy to get everything started. With them, we get a blow torch. Make sure that my damper control is wide open. Open is going to be all the way to the left. So blow torches are really nice. I have people concerned about it being dangerous. Uh, well, don't stick a blowtorch in your stove and walk away. Yes, obviously that's dangerous. If you are standing here with your blowtorch lighting your fire, it is not dangerous. This is not going to blow up. Um, super quick to get your fire started. It doesn't require like you to purchase any kind of fire starter. You don't even need to use paper to make this happen. So yeah. Super easy and highly recommend. And just like that, we have our fire going. No paper, really quick, about a minute or so. Maybe two. And yeah, that lit very easy. I'm impressed. Um, good draft, good airflow. It's actually pretty cold today too. A little bit of condensation on the glass. That's because like I said, it's cold today. Um, this is the first burn in this stove, so the outside air temperature around the stove is cold because I have the door open. Um, also, the chimney pipe is cold as well, so I would say that this is really nice. Sometimes stoves can be a little more difficult to light, so that's something I mentioned in one of the other videos, but having the damper control here on the bottom where it brings in that combustion air from below makes it much easier to get the fire lit. So as you can see, it was very easy, quick to get the Bistro model lit up. For the first time, um, I'm gonna let it burn in. From there, I will take us into some temperature readings after about a half an hour or so. This is about five minutes in to my burn. 
You can see that the glass is burning so clean. At first initial takeoff, we had a slight bit of condensation. Um, but with the warmth of the flame and the nice dry wood in the box, it dried out right away. And it's burning very nicely. Well, I am about, I'm going to say probably like 20, 30 minutes um, into my burn. And I'm going to give you guys some initial temperature readings. Top part of the stove is 134. Bottom firebox area is 80. Back of the cooktop is about 220. Front is 250. About, yeah, about 220 to 260 temperature range on the top. This is just from our initial kindling fire. So um, front door measurement on the glass is reading 480 degrees. And I'm going to actually head into our medium burn right now. So I am going to get, I have a pretty good bed of coals. So I think I'm going to put just one log in right now. This is a fairly large log. This is gonna take us into our medium burn. So I have a really full box of kindling, which is why I have such a good um, bed of coals right now. My firewood is like ee, a little bit long here, so mindful of that. I have been burning the stove for about like two hours now. I added in my one log and my coals at the bottom kind of burnt down. So I put a few pieces of kindling in there uh, just to lift it up. You can tell though, even, even with it just being a single log, like the glass is still burning nice and clean. So even kind of at a lower smolder stage where it wasn't getting good airflow, it still has a really nice air wash, which means the glass burns super clean. So I appreciate that. I'm going to give you guys some temperature readings right now so you know where we're at. Top of the stove is about a hundred and about 175 at the top of the stove. Bottom of the side panel is pulling about 82. The firebox door here, we're pulling a temperature of about 295 degrees. Top of the stove here is still ranging. We're still in about that same range of about 210 on the low end, all the way up to about 250 degrees. 252 degrees is the maximum. Um, so again, we've got just one simple log in here. As the stove is curing and as the paint is curing, the stove can produce a smell. So um, when I do it, I burn with the, the door open so that I can get a good airflow. You never want to be cooking or baking during your first burn because those smells can go into your food. Um, so keep that in mind. I always burn the stove at least one time before I do any type of cooking or baking. Um, and we gradually just kind of heat the stove up to temperature. So now that we've been burning at this stage, um, this medium hour, one log, um, I lifted it up to put another piece of kindling in there, but I'm actually going to slide one more small log in there to keep it going before I load into my full maximum burn. The stove definitely burns nice and clean. Very minimal smoke. Looks great. So I am about five hours into my burn already, and I would say I've had my two logs burning in here now for about an hour and a half. It's wide open. I still have quite a few logs left, but I want to give you this nice temperature reading right now. Ooh, top of the stove is about 389 degrees. 300, 420 degrees, 435, wow, 440. Over in this back corner is going to be your hottest area on this side. Um, the heat or the smoke from the oven is actually going to go this way up this side across the top and out the flue stack. So when you are facing the stove, 
your right hand side of the stove is going to be your hottest area. So on the medium burn, we're pulling a temperature of about 450 degrees. So plenty of hot area, also cooler area. Um, people often wonder about that with the stacked models on if the cooktop is actually going to get hot enough to be able to cook on. So 450 degrees is a pretty solid temperature to be able to even bring water up to a boil. All right, I am going to give you guys same oven temperature readings right now. So we are, like I said, about four hours, four and a half hours into this. Um, I'm in a medium burn, so I'm not like at the maximum temperature of four hours. So I just want to clarify that, that um, when you do your first burn, you just bring up the stove slowly. So we're not going to be at the maximum oven temperature right now. On this side of the oven, we're reading about 415 degrees. The rear of the oven is 330 degrees. In this the left hand side is 415 degrees. Bottom of the oven is reading 425. So yeah, nice hot oven temperatures, even with just a kindling fire into a medium burn. So you can easily get this oven up to baking, baking temperature without having to get the stove roaring hot. Okay, we're going to head into our final hot burn right now. I'm going to grab a few more logs here. I would say we have now been burning about six hours. So I want to get the firebox really full. Um, I don't have, so I'm going to add in a few more pieces of kindling here to kind of complete the firebox as well as I stack it up. All right, so on my final hot burn, I'm going to let it go about 20 minutes or so wide open to get it nice and hot. I'll give some temperature readings and then after that I'm going to damper the stove down to see what kind of burn time we're going to get out of the unit. Burning nice and hot with my roaring hot fire here. Glass is clean. It's a nice wide view. I really like the look of the fire. Um, as you can see, perfectly clean glass. Nice hot temperatures. Beautiful stove. We are 30 minutes into this hot burn, so the stove is wide open. This is like pretty much hot burn on temperatures that we're gonna get. So this cooktop is reading 536, ooh, 557 degrees at the back. Um, front corner here is about 500 degrees. Middle is about 480. Oh, 640, 70 degrees, 670 degrees right here. So yeah, that is really hot for the cooktop. Um, so there's your answer, guys. Everybody who asks about stacked models, if this cooktop gets hot enough to cook on and like fry eggs and bacon and everything, absolutely yes, it is burning very hot. In fact, I'm actually going to damper it down after these temperature readings to get our full and complete burn here. Top side panels reaching 315 degrees. Um, lower part of the side panel is now about 130. So that's why you have a 15 inch clearance off the side of the stoves. Other stoves do not quite get that hot like the soapstone models. Um, those would be more like in the 80 to 100 degree range. So that is definitely why you're going to need that. Temperatures on this side is about the same, pretty consistent. Um, 250 degrees at the top, about 150 degrees at the bottom. Firebox is reading 700 degrees inside the baking oven. 380 at the back, 480 at the bottom, 450 on the right hand side, and 480 on the left hand side. So boom, yeah, there you got it. 
Um, really nice hot baking temperatures, hot cooking temperatures to be able to fry up eggs and bacon. I will definitely do some cooking videos on this model as well. So be sure to look out for those cooking as well as baking. Um, again, I never want to cook or bake in the stove until you've cured all of the paint smell off. You definitely do not want that smell going into your food. Also, if you're sensitive, be mindful before lighting it in the house. Um, the way that our showroom is set up is I have a garage door literally right here that I open for this reason because I'm constantly curing and um, basically detoxing these stoves. So like it's important not to breathe this. I stand outside while I'm filming. Um, so just be mindful of that yourself. Maybe you even want to light the stove outside for the first time. If anyone in your household is sensitive, especially, or make sure that they leave the house when you're doing that first burn. If you guys find these video overviews helpful, please don't forget, give me a thumbs up. The more likes, the more subscribers I get, the more videos I do. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to click that subscribe button in the corner of the channel. God bless. Have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.